Square Enix has been in a very rough state over the past few years, and while I'd love if they'd turn things around and actually start listening to their customers again, I just don't see that happening anytime soon. But now a Square Enix shareholder has questioned the company about Sweet Baby Inc.'s involvement, and the president actually responded saying, airing this publicly isn't really the way to go. I have a few things to show off, but if you enjoy the content I create, follow me on social media, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, unfortunately for Square Enix, they are constantly doing something that upsets their players, but their involvement with Sweet Baby Inc. has been something we have questioned for quite a long time. At this point, we've definitely seen a shift in the company and their approach to, you know, female character design, storytelling, and of course, they last year had put out Forspoken, which was one of the worst flops ever. The studio was shut down only a couple of months after release, and they really deserved it because it was a truly terrible product. But now a Square Enix shareholder has questioned the company about its business relationship with Sweet Baby Inc. Now, of course, narrative consultation companies are being massively boycotted right now. There are hundreds of thousands to millions of gamers who refuse to touch products that companies like Sweet Baby Inc. work on. I mean, DEI Detected has over 400,000 followers. Never mind the people who know of these situations that simply aren't following that list. But, of course, whenever you hear SBI or you hear Gamers X or you hear Hit Detection, it's instant red flags. You know that something is going to be off with the product. And now we have shareholders questioning involvement. It says if you are unfamiliar with Sweet Baby Inc., the company's mission is to enjoy inject woke ideology in the form of inclusion and representation into the video game industry. The company's CEO, Kim Belair, has also encouraged individuals to terrify developers and executives in order to obtain her company's mission objectives. This is why you should not trust Kim Belair or anyone who works at Sweet Baby Inc. because it's not like they're saying we genuinely want to make a difference because we think that there could be slight changes that could make so many more people feel included like actually sounding genuine and passionate about simply wanting to create really good storytelling that happens to have people that are of different backgrounds or ethnicities. Um, no, she admits that she wants people to terrify developers and executives to get her way. That does not sound like someone who's just passionately trying to, you know, represent people because in the good of her heart, she feels that people should be represented more. It just sounds like someone who wants to control developers and control the industry. It says, of course, though, that recently, um, of course, there was Sweet Baby Inc. Detected that was created. Over 400,000 gamers have joined the Steam Curator list that you know, effectively functions as a boycott list for all games that Sweet Baby Inc. has worked on. And of course, if you are a supporter of SBI, you could use this as a list and just go down it and put everything in your cart and buy everything if you truly wanted to. It's not just a boycott list, but now we have a Square Enix shareholder being concerned about them being listed as one of their clients on the consultancy's webpage. And yeah, I mean, they are here only in the second line of clients. It really goes from largest clients to smallest. Um, but of course, at the end of the day, it Square Enix has had massive problems SBI aside, like they had their own ethics department that basically went into projects and looked at developers' work and told them what to change and what to tweak for modern audiences, as they claimed, aka sen sensitive snowflakes on social media who will try to cancel them any chance they get, and these people don't actually purchase their products. But the shareholder had asked during a recent report, I'm personally happy about the shift from quantity to quality. I do want to note this does sound good, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, we're hearing that from a lot of companies, even Bob Iger over at Disney has said they're sh making this shift as well. I personally will not believe it until I see it and I've got a different product in my hands. It says, though, I hope good titles will come out in the future. I agree. I loved Final Fantasy 16. It was my favorite video game release of last year, and I would love for them to continue those storylines with Jill and Clive and little Torgal. I loved it, but... 
there are other games that are releasing that are less loved, like the Final Fantasy VII remakes. They have been good, don't get me wrong, but I'm very tired of remakes, reboots, remasters, and I know a lot of people agree, and Square Enix definitely has focused on that, and they have such a giant, um, you know, array of games that they could work on and franchises they could continue, but instead, they're looking to make a quick buck, and people are kind of getting sick and tired of this strategy now. It says, though, I'm concerned about the Canadian consulting company Sweet Baby. Square Enix is listed as a client, but is there actually a transaction there? What kind of transaction is it, and will they continue to do so in the future? So, at this point in time, we do not know exactly what game SBI has worked on with Square Enix, but Squeenix has been on their list for years at this point, so I think it's safe to assume they have worked with them in the past. We just don't know on exactly what. If we look at something like Forspoken, Sweet Baby could have, in theory, also helped, but we know that they had worked with the consultancy group Black Girl Gamers, and of course, Forspoken was an absolute nightmare for them, so that's a different consulting company. I personally am leaning towards them working on something more akin to like a Final Fantasy VII. Now, they were not listed in the credits, which is why we do not know for certain, but because they've been on this client list for years, it seems like they have already worked with them. We just don't have any proof of you know, which project, but the Square Enix president actually decided to respond publicly saying, I would like to refrain from making specific comments about individual clients. Yeah, because he knows that there are hundreds of thousands to millions of gamers who are boycotting Sweet Baby. And if he starts actually talking about Sweet Baby and what games they've they've assisted on, um, it's not going to look good for them. As we shift from quantity to quality, providing content that is enjoyable and safe for our customers is also part of what makes a product fun. We will do our best as creators, so this does not sit well for me. It's talking about specific clients, oh, but also we want to make things that are deemed safe. If every piece of content and entertainment is deemed safe, now, everything is going to be bland and boring and sanitized, and that is not what people want. While, yes, you can have really lighthearted, fun, whimsical games, we also want, you know, heavy themes in our titles as well. Look at Final Fantasy, for example. We've got war, we've got famine, we've got questionable, you know, family relationships. We have a slew of things that are not deemed safe, so if you have an ethics department going in and sanitizing products and a consultant company doing the same, you're not going to capture the essence of what made your franchises so special, you know, in the first place. And of course, this line of questioning also comes in the wake of Square Enix working with Black Girl Gamers on Forspoken, a game that was an absolutely massive flop, one of the worst flops of last year. I mean, Luminous Productions failed so hard with this game, they shuttered their studio only a few months after this game's release. If you go on over to Metacritic, the critics didn't even, you know, completely hate it. They gave it a 64, which isn't awful, but the users gave it an, a generally unfavorable with a 3.9 saying the combat wasn't really special, the graphics were pretty mediocre, the characters and the writings was off. I mean, the list goes on and on and clearly, um, you know, they are struggling right now. I mean, even the representative director had admitted the game sales were not good during the company's financial results briefing back in February 2023. And we haven't heard anything from them since in regards to this game. So it is interesting to see this shareholder now come out and publicly voice, um, you know, their worries surrounding Sweet Baby Inc. and Square Enix's relationship. And I think that more shareholders at companies should be questioning their involvement with this company that is facing massive boycotts or any of these consultation groups that are facing massive boycotts right now because Sweet Baby Inc. is not the only one black girl gamers, gamers. X, Hit Detection, SBI, all of them are on the same boat right now, which is, you know, not a good one. Um, so only time will tell if the Square Enix president comes out and says anything else, if this investor comes out and makes any other statement saying, oh yeah, behind the scenes we actually spoke more about this, and this is the information I got. Only time will tell, but for now that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoy 
enjoyed this, give it a like. And if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way. But I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.